Welcome back. Just a quick reminder on this series. Yes, we're paid speakers, but for this series, it's just us talking about data. It's self-edited. So if you're watching us and you see a glitch, don't judge. On this episode, we dive into a scenario that was burning in Oz's mind. And about midway through, you'll hear us shift gears and dive into what we really mean about being a relentless analyst. Let's just dive right on into this episode. I know, I know you got a topic burning in your head right now. Um, I hate to say the, I hate to say the bikini model topic, but let's talk about the bikini model. Cause I think it's a, I think it's a good topic. And when we talk about being relentless analysts, like that's something we got to discuss is like, when do we rely on the data and when do we completely abandon it for what we think is the right choice? Right. So yeah. Why don't you just tell me about, the scenario and let's just kind of talk it out. Well, it's a question of when your analytics, your data says something fairly clearly, how do you put it into a context and decide whether to ignore it or go with it? And it's interesting when I was in a group of YouTubers, somebody posted that her anim her analytics made it clear when the, her thumbnail video thumbnail had her in a bikini the analytics were great but it was a travel channel and so being in a bikini wasn't always appropriate you know what if she went to you know chicago to taste the, the chicago pizza that's not a bikini appropriate topic but the analytics suggested uh, you do it. How do you decide when to go with the data and when not? Because, you know, it, it can be uh, uh, difficult to tear yourself away from what data says. Oh, yeah, I agree. Well, data is used to inform decision making. Mm -hmm. It isn't meant to guarantee a decision. Uh, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. And so, um, I, I think I'd want to, do you want to use the word guarantee a decision as opposed to like dictate a decision? Oh, either way. Yeah. Both. Okay. All of the above. Yeah. Again, I think that the important key word is inform. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I, I can make a decision and I know based on the data, I'm making an informed decision. Mm -hmm. But it may be completely opposite of what the data says. So I know um, I'm not the only person who feels this way. And I, the best person I heard communicate it, uh, Chris Nodder said, you know, I'm not going to post content for content. I'm going to use my genuine voice mm -hmm. and I'm going to post genuine content. So I think. There's a lot of different discussions that you can have in and around something like that. But then also, what is the mission of whatever it is you're trying to do? Yeah. yeah. You know, if you're broke and you're making your money on points and clicks through social media and ad sales and the bikini sales and feed your family, you know, I can see there's a strong desire to do that. Um, mm -hmm. But if you're wanting to organically build a following that's, not the same audience that just clicks on something because it's got a bikini on it. That's a different discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I think it's, I think it's, you know, what do you, what do you do? There's a lot of other points of data that are outside or outside of the thumbnail discussion, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. like how's, yeah. how does, and then how does that decision impact you in the short term and in the long term? Yeah. And, and I like how, because uh, I posed this to these uh, marketers in the Boston area, uh, Chris Penn and Katie Roberts of uh, Trust Insights. And one point that was made was, do you want the audience that's responding to these bikini thumbnails? They might be very different from the travel channel audience that is sought after uh, for this YouTuber. Um, 
So you could follow the analytics and wind up somewhere you don't want to be. Right. I want to be an influencer in a particular area, which is data. And I think we both, you know, we're, we're, we're like, would be micro influencers or whatever, but like, what is the magic number that makes you an influencer? And you know, what does that number count look like? And am I, am I hitting it, not hitting it? And so I, I had this discussion with an analyst who focuses on this and, and his response was you've got a million followers that pay you nothing for your whatever, then you've got a million zeros. Mm -hmm. You got a thousand people that pay you or, or whatever the pay may be. I don't even know. Like, again, that, that particular following does more for you, even if it's a smaller number. Yeah. So, yeah. and that's, that's been a thing that I had to recognize early on was back when my channel had less than a thousand subscribers, there were some pretty neat things that were happening off the platform things that weren't recognized in the analytics, you know, being able to, you know, go places, you know, go to um, Toronto on somebody else's expense mm -hmm. and then get there and find out, wow, people know me. Okay. That's not in my analytics, but this is cool. Yeah. You saw it in real time, real life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So how often do you think people are actually using data? I mean, I, I, well, I don't even know. Like, I don't think we could really answer this question, but it's like, I wonder how often people are making a decision based on a certain data point without really thinking about the fact that that data point isn't the decision. You know what I mean? Like, like you said, it doesn't dictate the decision. It's to meant to inform right. it. So like, yeah, I, you know. I don't know how often but I hear a lot of conversations, something interesting. So I take on somebody who uh, is going to help me grow my YouTube channel. And we look at our anal at, at my analytics and then he sees these videos are doing great for you. Oz, you need to do more of these. Well, one of those was a six person collaboration, which I cannot do weekly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then there was another one where I was talking about Excel controversy. I can't do that very often. I, my audience is an uh, Excel users group. Positive. Yeah. Positive. Right. Yeah. And yeah. they appreciate addressing the controversies but they didn't sign up for weekly Excel controversies. Yeah, okay. Right, and I could see eventually that kind of thing showing up as a no-no in the analytics if I did that too much. Yeah, detractor for real. Yeah, yeah you're stop like, doing you're an MVP that. and you know, I have nothing's perfect, but yeah, having a, I could, yeah, to me that seems totally off your brand. Right, right. And so there, a person has to think about, yeah, their brand. Um, what kind of audience do they want to attract? Because um, my number one blog post remains one that I did deliberately as clickbait and it backfired on me. Uh -oh. Because it did get the traffic and it got a whole bunch of evil people who read the headline and went straight to the comments start bitching me out and they didn't read how it was kind of a tongue in cheek thing. Yeah. It was more warnings. And so there again, the analytics say, keep riling people up. Said, what do you do when you're in charge of healthy eating, but then the audience keeps telling you they want more Oreo cookies. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's tough. And you make your money on what they click. And if they want Oreo cookies, uh, that, I, you know, I don't know. Like I, this, okay. So for me, I don't make uh, my living through social media ads. So that's yeah. a positive thing, yes. right? Cause I, yes. I get to, um, uh, my, my broadcast, my content, whatever comes out there is, is born out of a desire to get it out to people. Mm -hmm. 
Um, yeah. and yes, some of it is monetized and I'm, I'm happy that I finally made it to a place where that's true, mm -hmm. but I am not, you know, I'm fascinated. Like I have content that I thought would have done better and I have content that's done far beyond anything I could have imagined. Um, but I am not living or dying or eating or not eating based on social media ad content. And I don't ever want to be in that position because I, I want to always be able to maintain a genuine voice. So I make my living on the work of my hands, but everything else is, you know, it's just by choice and it can be genuine. I, 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 I'm yeah, fortunate to be wow. in that position, but you know, I, I do, I do appreciate that. You know, you figure out how to make money on something. People are going to, they're going to figure out how to make money on it. So. Right. And mm. don't, don't get me started on marketers. <laughs> Because the guy that I had helping me with this mission of growing my channel, I realized pretty quickly this guy is a marketer. Yeah. You know, you, if it said show up in jockey shorts on all your thumbnails, that he's going to do it. Because he's about to traffic. Um, and I get, I mean, I guess, I don't know, because I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't even analyze my own data, but, mm -hmm. you know, um, I mean, I do and I don't. My my problem is, is I need to know what the, what are the numbers I'm trying to obtain? And is there a certain, but the minute someone told me it doesn't matter the numbers you get, it's how important or how loyal that following is that matters most. You know, I stopped really caring about what the numbers were. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, again, I've always like, you know, um, paid ads. I usually only do any form of paid ads when I'm trying to promote the research work of my students mm -hmm. so that I can reach more people to get more data for them. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll sponsor a post for stuff like that, you know, and then we're highlighting something here or there, but it's never a lot of money. Um, yeah, it's just, it's really an interesting dilemma. If your if your data is directly related or your traffic or numbers or counts are directly related to a cent or a fraction of a cent or even five cents. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also pretty frugal. So like the idea of paying per click, I remember when that was all the craze, I'm thinking mm -hmm. well, I would pay $5 yeah, for somebody to click this. Wouldn't it be better if they just like it? And somebody right. shares it with them. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah. are you going to do what? Mm -hmm. Are you going to pay how much for them to yeah. just click it? And then they may do nothing. That just seemed like not an approach for me. But again, if that's, you know, I'm, I, I'm not making my living that way. If you're making your living that way, I can see where that data, data really matters. So what would you yeah. do, Oz, if you were in this predicament of your data is informing you that it thinks you should do something totally opposite of what you want to do? How well, would you make I, that decision? Well, I, um, I've had to make that decision and it was difficult to tear myself away and deliberately ignore the data. Um, but then this came to me fairly later in being a content creator. And so I've kind of had a vision and a sense of my brand so that when the data said something, I said, you know, no, get out of here. Uh, and when that blog post that I mentioned, when that got posted and all the nasty comments started coming in, but I could see the traffic immediately, I'm not doing this uh, immediately. I knew I'm not doing this anymore. Okay. It just didn't make you feel good. No, it did. It didn't make me feel good. Um, I felt like it created a whole big distraction for other people, people that I was trying to teach. Um, there was a whole bunch of negatives, but the traffic was good. <laughs> yeah, it's a, well, that says it. That says it. Like it was a whole lot of negative, but the traffic was good. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah but did did that traffic really in the end? you know, you got a, a moment of exposure, but did those people continue or, or are those, those, you know, three second clicks or whatever, and then they're on to the next thing and they don't really ever come back. 
Right. See, yeah. and see, I don't know. I didn't know enough about that. To, I didn't want to find out. I just needed to, you know, put a cover on this thing. <laughs> just, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was some we, serious regret. Yeah. Well, so because we're doing this to support, you know, the pursuit of analysts everywhere, you know, regardless of their tool set, uh, what, what they choose to bring to the table. Like, do you have any advice that you can think to share with a new analyst on dealing with the challenges or, or, or realizing you're studying data and you're about to bring it to a decision maker mm -hmm. and what the data says and what you know intrinsically or maybe don't know is going to be opposite? Is there, you know, is there ways that we can help other analysts look for things to determine if that's happening and... You know, how do they present it to leaders right. or decision well, makers when they when they discover it's like the data is totally opposite of what we think or right. off brand or what have you? Well, I think it has to do with um, knowing the data and seeing that the data is not final. The data is not the decision maker. And then understanding the business and... Mm -hmm. um, what the context is, why are we here? What are we doing? Um, and seeing if, if things line up that way, but it means really understanding the context and the data. Okay. And I feel like there's so much talk about the data. Um, we've got to, take a few steps back and get some idea of what are we trying to accomplish here? Okay. Yeah. Like a further, uh, spending, you know, looking at the data, but also spending time, you know, what are the goals? Yeah. Short term yeah. and long term. And, yep. you know, if your long term goal is to have a strategic or genuine or whatever voice and you use non meaningful short term strategies to drive traffic, are you ever going to hit your long-term goal? I, you know, I think that's all, you know, worthy, worthy discussion. I'm all, I'm just glad that it's not my everyday. I'm glad I don't have to make a living right. that way. Right. You know? And, and hit, hit your goal in a way that you want to hit it because mm -hmm. you could hit the goal in some ways you know, the, the, there's the destination and then how you got to the destination. Mm -hmm. Now, if the goal is to get say 10,000 subscribers in six months, there's a whole lot of ways to do it, but are they the ones that you want to pursue? At this point, we're about to change gears and I start asking Oz, what does he really mean about being a relentless analyst? Let's dive back in. Like, what does it really mean mm, to be right. relentless right, as an right. analyst? And, you know, I've said a bunch of times before about being curious. What does this data say? You know, um, digging, you know, uncovering problems in reports, um, taking ownership of the data that is never good enough to say, well, yeah, it's full of junk, but that's how I got it. You know, it's taking a responsibility, being a good data steward. I think even just talking about the topic of, you know, the, the, the data and I, again, the bikini model example or the bikini thumbnail example, part of that is a, is a great way to phrase what a relentless analyst is. Again, a relentless analyst would go in and say, okay, if I made this decision based on this one set of information, here are the drawbacks of that decision. Uh, here are the positives and negatives of that decision. Here are some of the shortfalls or short term, you know, positives that come from that decision. Like I think the part of being a relentless analyst is looking at every data point and decision that can be made and kind of like breaking it down to figure out like what's the positive and negative of this, you know, not everything is just like very discreet, you know, it's like a yes or no. Right. And it's going to be this thing. 
again, data is part of information process. It's not the end all be all. And I think that can sometimes be difficult because if someone asks you a question, like, what can I do to have more traffic? You go look at the data and the data says, well, you do this and you'll have more traffic. That just doesn't always necessarily end up being the right choice. And if you don't take every single part of that and the person you're talking to doesn't know to look at the full picture and they're just trusting what you say, mm -hmm. they're going to come back and ask you, why did you give me that? Why did you give me one data point and I made a bad decision? I didn't have all the information. So I think part of being a relentless analyst is having pursued all of the other information that's not necessarily just the one set of data or one data point on a particular data set for one particular thing so right and it sounds like see this is where our worlds are different right because mm -hmm. you're talking about analysts that kind of uh, have some advisory role they have mm -hmm. some input into the decision making whereas my experience as an analyst is to get the data mm, mm -hmm. uh, just get it clean it up maybe build a tool or something and whether it was a boss or a client they knew the analysis mine was to to get everything and do the calculations so you know like when i was a commissions analyst i had to make sure that the Excel formulas matched the compensation plan. Mm -hmm. uh, people would ask me you know, how I got it, my calculations. Like if somebody, uh, like if the vice president of sales said, whoa, that person earned that much commissions? Uh -huh. Okay, right. So then I've got to take him through my math and where the data mm -hmm. came from and I mm -hmm. haven't double counted anything. Yep. Um, but a lot of times there was stories and I'm trying to think about something where maybe some data was weird or off, but then I had to explain, yes, I know what's going on there and I'm still trying to dig under it to see mm -hmm. what's happening. Yeah. Um, and then there is developing a relationship with data to have some sense when it does look funny and then digging to see is this real or is there something of uh -huh. foul going on? Yeah. We're doing this right now too, because we're, we're supporting a customer who's implementing a, um, a CRM. I won't name, I won't like name any of it. Mm -hmm. Um, but basically, you know, we're maintaining their data in their data warehouse. And we're trying to like fill it with historical data and real time data and all of the above. And what we're sending and what they're receiving when we started digging into it, realized that the numbers are not right. Mm -hmm. Right. But we're supposed to be sending, like we're sending over a set of numbers. They're receiving a set of numbers and everything should reconcile. Like mm -hmm. they should be the same across all systems. And so trying to like figure out like, why don't they, why don't they reconcile? So that, you know, that we took the main, report and we're like okay here's what number we're supposed to be hitting and we're you know whatever million off uh where is the source of that and so you know and then it and then the the data people we we split into two worlds we go the one side is looking at what we're sending to confirm that we're sending the right information that's the relentless part and then the other side of the relentless part is they're looking to see how are we sourcing this calculation to see if there's something off in the calculation? And did we get all the data that they sent? So, yeah, but it took all of us going, wait a minute, that dashboard doesn't look right. Mm -hmm. Those numbers aren't right. Um, so it, it, it was because they weren't reconciling? Well, we still don't know the source of the problem. Okay. We, 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 right. we, think, we think it may be twofold. We think there may be a little a difference between how we're dealing with the dates and we don't think that they're injecting or they're receiving all the data that we're sending. Something mm -hmm. may be making the data not carry over, okay. um, but we're still in the process of it. Cause we can't go tell the customer like, well, this is what it is. 
because it's not. I mean, we got to go figure out like what, where did, where did the breakdown occur? Mm -hmm. And once we've determined on all sides through our root cause analysis, I guess, figure out where the breakdown has occurred, whoever's problem it is, is going to fix it. And it's going to fix the problem everywhere. Okay. So now you're sure that there's a problem and that is there a possibility that you could dig and dig and dig and find out, guess what? This is it. No, no. not in this okay. scenario because we, okay. we, we have, we have the golden record. Okay. We know okay. what the number is. Okay. You know, gotcha. it could, yeah, but it, if we didn't have that, then it would be, oh no, this is your numbers, which is a different mm -hmm. conversation. No, this is right. really just a, the records didn't make it all the way through, or there's some kind of filter happening on their view that didn't make the numbers add up in the calculation correctly. Or, you know, maybe we have all the numbers, but it didn't, it didn't carry over because there's some kind of weird character in one of the fields and made them drop out and didn't tell us, you know, yeah. so, but the, again, the relentless part happens in two areas. It happens on our side, the sender and on the receiver side. But yeah, we do have something to reconcile against. And so, okay. you know, luckily we have that. Um, but yeah, right. I've been in scenarios where they thought one thing. And when the data is out, mm -mm, it's not what you think. Right. You know, right. Um, and once you have a golden record or a source where you know what your numbers should reconcile to be, you know, it that's definitely easier to like measure against. But yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah yeah but you know I, we can't just decide i can't just decide it's their fault mm -hmm. and they can't just decide it's my fault right as a data team we have to work on both sides until we resolve what the problem is so i think relentless yeah. can mean a lot of different things depending on what your project which yeah, project actually is definitely definitely and i think about the times when i have been the guy you know when i was doing commissions uh all the data would come to me and then I would calculate it all out and send it to the controller and then the vice president of the sales and they had approve it. And then I'd send it to payroll. Um, now I sometimes had to hound people about getting me your data so that I can mm -hmm. integrate it into to the calculations. Um, but I was pretty much it. And when the numbers looked funny, Cause I was the only one who could see them all once yeah. you, cause they are coming from maybe six different sources that I had to bring together. And when they looked funny, a lot of people were counting on me to dig into that. And, yeah. um, sometimes being that solo data person yeah. can be a really scary yes. spot to be in. Mm -hmm. Um, I know you've talked before about having to kind of dial back and admit, Hey, I made a, I made a miscalculation here and we're going to have mm -hmm. to like mitigate it in the next, next payout. Yeah. Um, but you know, I think also that's an important thing about being a relentless analyst is also you're honest about where you've just, where you've discovered problems in the data. Yeah. Um, yeah. and you know, again, you hope for soft, uh, warm, loving ears to hear it. You start talking about money. I usually don't go down it's that tough. way, but it's yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Uh, I'd much rather be, I'd much rather than be mad at me for a minute, but respect me for the truth than to lie and everybody go off happy and then discover. Cause the truth is going to always, the truth is always going to come out. So, well, Oz, any final thoughts? No, just, just stay on top of that data. Stay, stay on, on top, top of it. Stay relentless. And, and, and don't forget the people who rely on us. Because data and these tools are not the end all. Because when somebody wants their pay right, when somebody wants to order something and they and they want to make sure that it is in inventory, that's why we do this. Love it. Love it. Yeah. And I'll just say stay relentless. All right, yes. Oz. It's been All fun. Right. Let's do it again. All right.